Hello and welcome or welcome back. My name is Shannon and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit of a reading update on the items that I'm currently reading. And there are also a couple of books that I have half read that I'm trying to figure out if I'm ever going to finish them or if I end up having to DNF them. So let's get started with the updates on what I'm currently reading. As I mentioned one or two videos ago, I'm actively reading Ruth Bader Ginsburg, A Life by Jane Sharon DeHart. I started this book with a physical book and I was having a hard time getting through it because it does spend a lot of time on her cases, not so much on her life, although it does actually you know, go into some portions of her life, but I was having a hard time reading the cases. And so I switched to audiobook and I passed along my physical copy to my mother to see if she wanted to try to get through it. The audiobook has been very helpful and I am getting through it at a pretty decent rate. I have maybe a couple hours left. One thing that is a disadvantage with not having the physical copy is that I remembered I wanted to go back and check something in one of the earlier chapters related to Ruth's mother. And now I don't have the physical copy, so now I can't go back and find that quote that I wanted. And I'm not going to try to go through this audiobook and see if I can find it. So this is my first audiobook, and I do notice that that is one of the disadvantages of having an audiobook. There was something I remembered, I wanted to go back, and I'm probably never going to find it again. But so far, the book is good. It is a little dense. I wish there was more about Ruth herself and maybe um, a little less on the cases, but so far so good and I'll let you know when I finish it. The next book that I'm actively reading is Gaudy Night by Dorothy L. Sayers. It is an old school detective novel. However, I noticed that there's not a whole lot of detecting going on and the mystery itself is really taking a back seat in this story. And instead we're getting a, a pretty decent character study of Harriet Vane and other women in the Oxford College that she is a part of and where this mystery is taking place. We're, we're getting bits and pieces of this mystery. We're not getting a whole lot on it. It wasn't until I noticed this lengthy paragraph about women and children and the workplace. Remember, this is 1935. Women who were married with children did not work. Okay, it just very rarely was done. So there's this lengthy discussion how one of the teachers is mad at the dean for allowing this woman with children to be the dean's secretary. And this secretary has to leave every now and again in order to take care of a sick child or something, you know, the kid fell from a tree or something and hurt himself or, or whatever. And the dean is fine with it. The dean basically says she does good work she's got to go take care of her kids then that we you got to do that that's just how it is and the unmarried teacher who is angry about it thinks that this woman should just make a choice either care for her children or work you can't have both and it was then that i realized that this book is not really about this mystery because i noticed as i was going along in the book there were these random conversations you know, Harriet Vane is fighting with herself whether she should marry Lord Peter Whimsey or not. And she's going through the reasons. And then there are lots of conversations throughout the story that focus on the choices that women have to make. Should they be able to go to school and get an education? Do they have to choose marriage or education or work? And, and I was like, okay, wait a minute, something's something's off here. <laughs> this is supposed to be a detective story. But I now think that Dorothy L. Sayers was going through something and she was trying to figure it out in this book. So I went and listened to the podcast that actually inspired me to uh, pick up this book, which is a, lip the, a literary life podcast and I'll, I'll put the information in the description box. They were the ones that were doing, a, they were going to do some episodes on Gaudy Night. So I decided to stop listening to the podcast, read Gaudy Night, and then go back and listen to some of the episodes. So what I did was I went to the podcast and I listened to the first couple of episodes on Gaudy Night, and I am not wrong. 
the mystery itself takes a back seat and instead Dorothy is spending a lot of time on this matter of uh, women, children, marriage, decisions. This is a different story. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going to stop where I am and I'm going to go back to the beginning and actually pay attention to all of the conversations that I glossed over because I thought that this was a detective story. Well, in a sense, it is a detective story because even though Harriet Vane isn't doing a whole lot of detecting in here, there are a lot of things that the reader has to find and locate and detect. So the reader is the detective here trying to figure out what Dorothy is trying to say here. Um, from what I can tell, it doesn't seem like Dorothy is advocating one position or another. I think she's just going through it, trying to figure things out. So that to me is interesting. And so I'm going to actually go back to the beginning and see what I can glean out of this story. The last book that I'm actively reading is Angela's Ashes by Frank McCourt. If you remember from my last video, this is part of my 2024 reading challenge. This is my March pick. And I had read this many years ago when it first came out. I had forgotten most of it. So this is a reread for me. I really am enjoying it the second time around. And now I remember why I kept it all these years. Even though Frank McCourt is talking about pretty serious issues, he grew up in extreme poverty in uh, Limerick, Ireland. The church was really difficult back then. His family was not so kind. And by family, I mean aunts and uncles and grandparents, not his parents. His parents appeared to be very loving, despite the fact his father was an alcoholic and literally drank all their money away. And they did not have much food or clothing or anything like that. Frank is telling the story from his childhood self, which makes the story very funny because children just certainly don't understand what's going on, especially in such dire times. So I'm enjoying it and I'll let you know my final thoughts when I finish. Next, I want to talk about a couple of books that I have half read. At the end of 2023, I was looking for a bookmark and I could not find any. Turns out I had a whole slew of books, half read, and that's where all my bookmarks were. So I've been slowly trying to get through all of those half read books so I can claim my bookmarks back. And some of those I will be talking about uh, soon. I'm, going, I'm doing a separate video with books that I've read in January and February, and a couple of those will be on that list. But there are three that I just still have not been able to get through and I, I need to figure out if and when I'm going to actually finish these books or if I need to just DNF them. The first book is David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. I started this in 2021. I got almost halfway through and I put it down and I just never picked it back up. I'm not exactly sure why, because I wasn't disliking the story. I, I, it was actually going pretty well. I'm not a huge fan of Dickens, so I wasn't sure how I would feel about the story, but I was actually enjoying it. And I was getting to the part where David meets, uh, I can't even remember her name, meets the woman that I think becomes his wife, Dora or something like that. I see, I can't even remember. <laughs> it's been so long. It's been sitting on my shelf, half read. And I've really been wanting to read more male classic authors. So I am hoping to finish this. I just hope I haven't forgotten so much that I have to start over because I, I probably won't start over. The next book is 1491, New Revelations of the Americas Before Columbus by Charles C. Mann. I think Charles Mann is a journalist and this book is supposed to dispel this myth that the Americas were this vast, sparsely populated wilderness, and that there was not a great population here, when in fact, according to this book, there were great civilizations here. There were a lot of people here at the time before Columbus. He talks about the Mesoamerican cultures, the, you know, the Aztecs, they had running water, they had cities. He also talks about how Mexican cultures cultivated corn, which could possibly have been the first genetic agricultural modification. 
Man also spends a lot of time talking about the squabbling between all of the academics. There appears to be no consensus amongst anthropologists or archaeologists or the researchers, and nobody can really agree upon how long ago the Americas were first populated. I'm about, I'm almost halfway through, and it is very interesting, but I think I might switch to audiobook like I did with uh, the Ruth Bader Ginsburg book. I just find that it's not holding my attention as much as I was I would like, even though it is really interesting stuff and it's not overly academic. He does weave in narrative story in this book. It's just for whatever reason, I'm not retaining the information. So I think I might switch to audiobook and see what happens there. I'll let you know. The next book is The Henna Artist by Alka Joshi. I have this on my iPad and I had downloaded it sometime last year for a flight. I don't actually recall where I was going, uh, but I did start reading it on the flight. This is set in post-independence India in the 1950s, where a young girl named Lakshmi escapes an abusive marriage. She makes her way to the big city and then over time establishes herself as one of the top henna artists in the city. She becomes confidant to many of the wealthy women in that city. And then lo and behold, years later, the husband finds her, shows up at her door with Lakshmi's sister, who Lakshmi did not know existed because her parents had disowned her when she escaped her husband and thus had no idea the sister existed. And that's as far as I got. And I just haven't had the desire to pick it back up. I almost feel like the story is kind of predictable. I'm sure the younger sister, who I think is maybe 12 or 13-ish, is gonna cause problems as you know a, a, a preteen does. She's probably going to cause Lakshmi some issues and not realize the consequences of her actions. And I'm sure Lakshmi's position in this society, this life that she built for herself is going to be threatened. I can, I can just see that happening. Um, and for whatever reason, it's just not interesting to me, but I don't know, we'll see how I feel. Maybe on my next flight, I will finish it. I do have a couple of flights coming up in the spring. So maybe I will finish it while I'm trapped on an airplane. That is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.